Here's your smart fact of the day. The muses, or rather the muse, was considered as inspirational goddesses of literature, science and the arts. They were daughters of Zeus, if I'm not mistaken, and they served to inspire us even today. How? Because when we are trying to do something creative, when we are trying to do something inspired, we say we are waiting for the muse to work upon us, work the magic upon us. Welcome to Smarter with Sid. And this episode, we are going to try and figure out how do we actually meet this muse or is it worth it? Let's go. So what I'm trying to do on Smarter with Sid is to first give the context on which this thought is coming through, then perhaps go down to some first principles, some truths that we can take away. And then maybe the takeaway can lead to us doing a practical thing, a practical takeaway. I mean, how can we apply it in life? Well, that's the attempt anyway. The idea is to get 1% smarter. And this time it is the muse. My muse is the muse. What am I talking about? The muse, right? It is a very interesting uh, turn of phrase that we keep using. Oh, he's waiting, this writer, this creative director, this, you know, anybody who's got half a creative job is saying, I'm waiting for the muse to hit me. I'm waiting for inspiration. Now, is that just procrastination or is it really something that is a real thing? Now, the muse is something which is an incredibly divisive sort of uh, thing, right? Because some people say, yeah, unless and until you are inspired by an idea, the idea will hit you. Maybe it's after a drink of alcohol or maybe you've gone for a walk or you've done something crazy and then an idea hits you. Till that time, everything that you develop is going to be second rate. It's not going to be really important. So don't do any work till the muse hits you. And in fact, some artists used to actually keep somebody, not just from the opposite sex, mind you, from the same sex or an object or something that inspires them, that inspires them to produce their best work. Of course, this does sound dodgy. This does sound dodgy. But that is what a muse is supposed to do. A muse is supposed to inspire you and make you, uh, you know, somebody who is like supercharged, full of creativity. Now, does this work? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I did a bit of a deep dive on this and I figured out, okay, what do really popular authors uh, do? You know, so does a guy like Jeffrey Archer or Stephen King wait for the muse to hit, wait and just procrastinate and dilly dally till, you know, they're feeling creative? Well, actually, they don't. In fact, they've gone on several times on the internet. So you can Google it if you don't believe me. What they say is that, look, you got to sit in the same chair, whether the muse hits you or not. And you've got to, you know, just start typing. In fact, Stephen King has sort of a mandate for himself. He set it for himself, saying that he's going to type in 10,000 words per week. So he's going to do 10 pages per day. Jeffrey Archer has a punishing schedule. He wakes up, uh, he works from 6 to 8 and 10 to 12 and I think one more time. And he has a pattern of doing things. He goes for walks in the middle and, and stuff like that because his mind is churning and he wants to make sure that the ideas are coming out. And he's done that for over 30 years. I think even when he was in jail, Now, is this only restrictive to, uh, say, writers? Not really. I mean, if you look at Paul Graham, uh, who's an investor, um, you know, and, um, you know, somebody who's deeply associated with Y Combinator, which is a company that encourages startups, focuses on focus. And I think this is also deeply connected to not really waiting for any inspiration or any muse, but actually putting yourself a target in front of you. Now, what Paul Graham does as an investor is says that um, as a, an entrepreneur, what you need to do is just try to grow uh, maybe uh, by 5 to 7% every week on week on week. Now, while some of you may not agree with him on, on the, the, the scales of growth that he's talking about, and maybe we'll do an episode on what is growth and what is not growth and what is good, and etc. a little while later, This episode is more about the attitude that he's trying to bring to the table. And the attitude is one about not waiting, right? So that's a bit of a change of perspective. And there are a lot of artists I know, some good, some mediocre, some terrible, who keep procrastinating, not waiting for things to happen. But the people who seem to have gone to the top of class, right, 
the best of the best, maybe the greatest of their genre, their elk seem to be following a process that is completely devoid of the muses' interventions. Is that so? Is that so? I mean, is that the new perspective? Just to be clear, I think these guys are talking more in terms of mundane things like habit and discipline. Like you sit down in front of your chair and you take out your keyboard and type in. You go to your work at a particular, and that seems to be the uh, you know rule of thumb. Now, a lot of creative folk, when they will listen to this, they will kind of you know feel all bristly. They will say, "What is he talking about? No, you cannot have an idea uh, unless and until inspiration strikes you." And I got to wait. I got to let it brew in my head. What's all this about writing? And here's an interesting thing that I heard, which might convince you folks who are on the other side of the fence on this one from me, and it is about a writer. and the definition of a writer and it's a very simple one a writer is somebody who writes every day rather than saying oh i am a writer i wrote a novel 10 years back or 15 years back or i am a writer because i uh, have a draft uh, which i'm working on every time i get a chance no a writer is somebody who prioritizes writing every day sits in front of uh, a, a laptop and start typing and whether you're a writer a designer a creative sort of painter or even if you're creating a normal document or working on an excel sheet or just being a manager i i think the the key message over here is don't wait for the best conditions in order for the best work that you've got to offer to come forth it's the habit and discipline probably that makes the biggest difference to the equation especially when it, you have to move from just being good or average to somebody who's you know really really good now that does mean putting into place a routine and that routine is not something which should constrain you it should be something that kind of liberates you it allows you to indulge in bad work till good work happens but if you do it consistently i think you have the chance to forgive yourself for all the bad work don't be judgmental about your work which is not inspired but continue sitting there continue sitting there because there's something strange and wonderful that happens if you continue sitting there yeah now the results of all this work that you put in is not i'm not trying to slave drive you guys i'm not trying to slave drive you hey if the other way was a better working way i would probably recommend it but today i am inclined to actually believe that you know with all the discipline and the habit and the focus what you're ending up doing is being ready for the muse now let me explain what i mean it's not like you're working in spite of the muse not being there it's like you're telling the muse you know and i'm being a little poetic over here you're telling the muse i'm ready to receive you i'm ready because i'm working maybe you will visit me today or maybe you won't but i'm going to sit here and and do my work in any case you might find you might find that the muse visits you more often than not and why does that happen that happens because of the fact that expectation of sitting down and wanting to write just allows those neural circuits the right neural circuits and the networks to start exploding inside your head and making up for some fantastic stuff try it out before you start cursing me and i hope you like this episode of mine on smarter with said many more to come from from where this came from and hey i'm the traveling professor you can always follow me on linkedin or on instagram and if you like shows like this well ivm's got a lot of great stuff for you go check it out <laughs>